Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and hey. good evening, everyone, depending on where you join us from today. Today, we are going to talk about a new programming language, and for that, we want to welcome Sina. Hi, Sina, how are you? Are you excited? I'm, yeah, I'm uh, very excited and fine, thank you. Great yeah. to hear that. Where are, and, where are you uh, located, Sina? Yeah, I'm in Copenhagen in uh, Venlöse, which means something like Waterloose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's yeah, an exciting fact. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a very a little suburb out of uh, Copenhagen, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is not so exciting, but uh, really nice. <laughs> no, but that I didn't know that uh, uh, it means that. So that, that's at least something yeah. new to hear yeah. about. But we will hear about a lot more uh, new information. And before we get there, um, I also heard something about that you are an author of a book. Could you tell yes. a bit about this book, please? <laughs> yes, and now I haven't got it here with me. No, but it's uh, I'll uh, <laughs> find a picture. <laughs> it's a book called... Uh, Quinnick uh, and Nicole in English, it's called like a woman's code book. And it is not because it's only for women, but it's more because I noticed that there are so many of the uh, programming books we have already, which are very much uh, on cars and airplanes and so on. So I thought we should try to broaden out the palette a bit. So I tr tried to make um, a, a woman's. Uh, 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 it's dangerous to say women's, uh, but, but uh, to, to have it uh, with, with a you have to have it in in more colors than it is so far, so to say. Uh, so I have uh, both both some introduction to computational thinking and what is it really, and I'll uh, I'll use a bit of it in my presentation, and then also some which I actually really enjoyed making was to to make some biographies on on uh, uh, historical uh, programming women, and there are quite a lot I figured out. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So there is That's like. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the, the pre-inventor of COBOL was, for example, a woman called Grace Hopper, who also invented uh, the term uh, computer bug, for example. So there is a, <laughs> there is a, there are a lot of uh, uh, women in history, and, and I just thought that it was interesting because, you know, I had this idea that we are very few, Eve, who are, <laughs> who are here in computer science, but, uh, but like 50 years ago, it was a, a woman thing. And I thought that was actually interesting. That's true. Yes, and yeah. that's very true. Um, okay, that's really interesting. So where can people find this book if they want to read it? Uh, oh, at, uh, for example, Saxo. Um, okay. Yeah, it's uh, like a book, Danish uh, uh, e-book store. It's in Danish, so I think if you don't speak Danish, it doesn't <laughs> give much sense. To make much I sense mean, it's better. never too late to learn a new yeah. language, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, then you can both learn to program and a new language. Exactly. Yeah, so, but yes. I have no uh, programming languages as such there. I have only uh, block programming and then actually a bit of uh, Excel because I thought many people, they are maybe know how to do something in Excel and then, you know, trying to I try to translate it into what is it mm. like when you program? Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. And uh, now that we talked a bit about it, funnily, that okay, we can anytime start learning a new language. Today, we're going to actually start learning a new language. And before we get to that, we would like to give you a small introduction to AI42. And then we switch back to Sina and she'll get going about our programming language. So see you later, Sina. Hi, and welcome back, everyone. So uh, the motivation for starting AI42 comes from the recognition that there is no good starting uh, material. And we aim to take you all the way from complete beginner to getting enough knowledge to build your own model. So um, Hokan, would you like to say a bit of the details as well? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Eve. So uh, what we would like to do here is we want to like to give everyone a chance to get into this interesting field. So what we're doing is we have invited in industry experts and recognized speakers. So they will have sessions with us two times a month on, uh, on Wednesdays at uh, five o'clock Central European time. And then we will start out, we have started out here with mathematics and statistics and probability theory to give you a solid ground to stand on. 
And then after that, we've dived more into languages and tools. So for example, in our previous sessions, we have talked about uh, SQL and we talked about Python. And now we'll have two sessions on R. And after that, we'll look into more into tools like Power BI and Databricks. And then we'll go into more details like how can you set up your own machine learning pipeline and maybe more advanced topics like reinforcement learning and uh, deep learning. And in addition to these uh, theory theoretical sessions, we will also have more practical workshops where you can put this theory into, into practice. Yes, and you will be able to connect with all the best in class experts from all around the world that will hold you these lectures and workshops with really rich content. And uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can find our recordings from our previous sessions on YouTube, and you can get information about our upcoming sessions at Meetup. We also create cross-collaboration with other organizations, so we can give you the best opportunities to broaden your network in the AI and data science communities. Um, so we are in close collaboration with Global AI Community and, uh, and uh, C Sharp Corner. And hereby, I also want to say thank you for our sponsors, uh, Microsoft and Miles. Yes, and as Eve said here, we're, uh, we're in close collaboration both with the global AI community and the C Sharp Corner. So you will be able to see all of our sessions are recorded both on our own YouTube channel, but you can also find them here on the global AI community channel and also on the C Sharp Corner channel. And we would also like to thank Mila Marie, who has composed and performed our intro music, and all of the graphic design that you can see here throughout the stream is, uh, is developed by Levente Pongor. So thank you so much. Uh, so thank you so much to him. And before we switch back to Sina, we want to say a great, great, great thank you to all you guys for joining us today again. Uh, please remember to follow us on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you want. And uh, remember to sign up for our meetup group as well so you get information about our upcoming sessions as well. So shall we get back to Sina? Yes. Thank you, so great. and uh, hey. yeah, such a great uh, initiative you are having. Yeah, all right. It's, it's nice so, to uh, see you back. Yeah, so <laughs> should I just start? Yeah, you can. So let's, before starting, I wanted to have a little bit of a chit chat about what are we going to talk about, actually. Yeah. So what are we going to hear today? Okay, yeah, I actually have it in my slides, but I can just uh, briefly tell it, then it will be more lively probably too. So we are going to have a very introductory introduction to R and a bit about some of the basic coding uh, programming concepts uh, that, we, that we use uh, in, in other programming languages as well. So, so, th so those of you who are, um, are very, maybe already experienced programmers and so on, you can maybe lean back and uh, <laughs> and and uh, maybe get some inspiration on how you can tell it to others or maybe you can just uh, uh, um, yeah yeah uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you want yeah, they can always to? follow but, you right yeah 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 <clears throat> so so uh, so today will be very basic on on uh, on uh, all the variables and what is called variables vectors and and uh, data frames and uh, how, what we can uh, do with these concepts and how we can, uh, when, when we are working in R, and also a bit, of course, on why we are choosing R now and then. Yeah, instead of Python, well, thank for you. example. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, and some practical information is going to be shared on the chat during the session. For example, there will be some information shared about setting up your own R studio as well, so you can work together with Sina during the session and write your own code in R. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, on the other hand, please remember to post your questions in the chat so we can answer them throughout the session and in the end as well. So let's get going. Yes. Are you ready, Sina? Yes. Yep. I am. Take yes. it away. Yeah, so Sina, yeah. before we start here, you could just share your share your screen. Yes, oh, yes. I'll do that. Like that. And I'll uh, I'll do it like this, and you can see my screen? Yeah, one moment here. We can't, not yet here. Maybe try to share your Yeah, wait a minute. Again. Yeah, I do it now. 
Okay, I just no, asked. Yeah. Yes. So I we're just gonna have. <laughs> we're just gonna have a little bit of music here before we start here. Okay. Thank you. And uh, also thank for the uh, interesting introduction and really feel free to ask questions and also give comments because I'm curious on, on how this will, will actually work today. And I'm going to do a pre uh, follow up uh, in a couple of weeks. So, uh, so therefore I can, I mean, good uh, input for improving is really nice. Um, so as we talked about, I, I'm the author of uh, Clinic and Cool, but I'm also a researcher as, at the CBS where I'm doing research in data science and citizen data science. Um, and also I actually have a PhD in AI that's uh, like 10 years ago, <laughs> uh, but it's and, and, and the kind of AI I work with in that time is all symbolic AI, which is uh, more on logic and um, and rules and so on. And I work with, for example, something called uh, description logic. Um, so, uh, but I'm more data driven now. So I work much more um, within the area of the data science. I've been working with uh, genetics and um, the genetic data, and, and uh, that was a really huge amounts of data. And then I have been working with educational data uh, the last uh, four or five years, four years. So, um, so that's uh, that's my area, and I've also been working in a in a publishing company. We made uh, tech books, so that's also why I got inspiration of actually writing a book myself. And I'm sorry that I haven't full presentation mode, but it makes it much easier to switch back and forth from my uh, code and to my um, uh, presentation here. Uh, so. Uh, why uh, should you use R? So I have to start with a small sale uh, speech here. So it's um, particularly for, for statisticians, it's great. It ha has many uh, functionalities uh, and it's open source. Um, and it then has a lot of more functions than for example, uh, Excel does and so on. Uh, if we look more into uh, why should you, for example, how, uh, choose R instead of Python. Usually, maybe when you're doing uh, uh, deep learning and so on, you should use Python. But if, uh, but it has some very elegant um, uh, uh, functions and so on, particularly within the stat area, which um, where you can write uh, a lot of things uh, in uh, using very little amount of space. Um, it's also, some people say that the first learning steps are easier than in Python. I don't know if that's true, but uh, I have just taken it with it. Uh, and you can also do some amazing visualizations of all kinds um, uh, within R. And also, uh, there are also poss possibilities of making dashboards and, uh, uh, and, and more uh, automated, uh, generated, uh, automatically generated file, uh, files and so on. Um, and the uh, last thing that's actually also really good um, uh, reason for, for working with R is that there is this uh, environment, R, stu R Studio, uh, where there is bo both an editor and a lot of other things. And I'm going to, uh, to show you that uh, in a minute. So uh, here is the uh, plan. Um, as I said, uh, today we'll look a bit about uh, uh, input file formats or reading in uh, files and so on. It's uh, it's uh, one of these things that that are challenging uh, for many new programmers. Actually, um, I once had a course where I re uh, to should be teaching uh, R, but it, and it took maybe I mean it took most of the first part to actually <laughs> to actually read in files because there were a lot of different ways to do it. So I have tried to make one foolproof way of doing it now. Um, always dangerous to say that. <laughs> so uh, we are also trying to calculate uh, a bit uh, some arithmetics in R. Uh, we are going to look at the uh, data frames and also a few functions. And then next time we'll uh, go more into functions and uh, modeling, actually doing some, some uh, linear models and so on um, to prepare for the third time, where, which I'm not teaching, but it's my old colleague actually, 
uh, will be teaching that one on machine learning and so on using R. Um, and I'll also go a bit into uh, how you can visualize in R using ggplot2, which is a package that you can use. All right. So uh, as I said here, uh, to get started, you can uh, watch the two videos that we have uh, um, applied. I'll just show you very briefly what I did in these videos. Um, uh, so, um, uh, so, but that's just something you can return to afterwards if you are uh, if you are very new to programming. I also have some resources here for you that you can use. There are both uh, many good cheat sheets. Uh, there is a very good book called R for Data Science, uh, and then there is a Danish site for those of you who are, who are Danes, uh, which is called um, R Guide, uh, and it's by Eric Garner. So. So there is the so here is a bit of the resources, and this is and um, I know now where we are online anyway. I know there are people from outside Denmark uh, joining, and I think that's uh, hilarious. Um, okay, uh, yeah. So maybe I should just now I have opened the ball talking about our studio. So I will start here, just showing uh, you the uh, the interface. You'll probably uh, we'll just make a new script here. When you open R Studio first time, you'll probably um, um, will probably look a bit like this. So you, there will be no uh, uh, your environment will be empty, your uh, uh, console will be empty, and and you'll have no uh, maybe you will not you will not even have a script. But then you can just uh, write new file and then press uh, R script. So, um, and in here you can uh, write your code. So I have uh, written some already here up, some some uh, very basic code, uh, which I hope is big enough for you to, to see. I have tried to uh, zoom in a bit. Um, and there is a few things uh, you can do. When you are going to have things running, you are putting your cursor here just on the line and you try uh, then you press the control enter and then you have uh, you can see you have an x with the value tree so we have put an tree into um, the variable x so um, so that so, and and um, and and that's um, some very basic things that um, is uh, like like a <laughs> pre uh, so something that sometimes take a while before you have done that. One thing you could also see here is that it's not only here you can see that X is now tree, so it's kind of stored in here. So you have your your data, uh, whether it's a variable or it's a table or whatever, you have it in here where you can see it. Also, you have it here in your console uh, where you can where X um, where you have put an X um, equal tree equals tree. And you can also, if you want to, you can also take this whole uh, data frame, um, sorry, no, this whole chunk of code, and then run it by pressing control enter. And then you have both um, a vector called V and a data frame here called DF. Um, we can uh, look at this by just pressing over here, and we can see here what it, uh, this data frame look like. So, um, I'd, I'd like to uh, say a little bit about these things. Now you've just seen me uh, throwing around with code, uh, but but it's um, uh, what what I've tried to uh, to talk about is that there is uh, there are both uh, data structures like a vector or an atomic variable or whatever. And then there are uh, also data formats, um, and I think like uh, da data format types are like a different ingredients. For example, when you are baking muffins, it's important that you blend the wet things together and the dry things together. So it's like uh, if you try to take a text string and add two, you'll get some troubles here, uh, right? Whereas if you take three and add two to this, then you get five, and that's uh, really nice, right? So, um, so, so it's important that you, uh, you are aware of which uh, data formats you have. And that's also what can sometimes uh, be a bit uh, uh, annoying in many programming languages if you have uh, the wrong um, 
uh, data type and you try to do something with it, then it maybe don't uh, do what you want, want it to do. Then finally, there is something called functions. If you have already been at the, at the Python course and so on, of course, you you know something about functions, but they are uh, they are pre-coded stuff that does things um, to what you have been working with. So it can be, um, uh, it can, for example, uh, here I have just for fun said it, like this is a whiskers function. So when you are I don't know, you know what it's called in English, but when you're uh, turning your <laughs> uh, door, when you're uh, trying to <laughs> mix, mixer, yeah, when you try to mix your dough, uh, you, you know, there is kind of a mixing function that that uh, that you need. And, and, and I try to say it, so that's a bit the same here when you're um, working within R, then you have a several functions that does things. It could be like it can, make a statistical test or it can uh, transform your data or so on. So there can be a lot of uh, um, different ways uh, a function uh, can can work. Um, and, and R is uh, very fu function oriented. So it's also easy in R to actually write your own functions or easy. I mean, I'll not teach you write, how to write functions right now because there are so many that is already met, made. but um, but that is uh, definitely a thing. All right. So that was just a very uh, uh, high level uh, introduction of, of, uh, of uh, data syntax in R. Um, so so we, you could think of it a bit like a grammar where we just looked at uh, atomic variables, vectors, and data frames in the coding. So um, this is like an atomic vector wherein we have put a tree. And this is, um, uh, sorry, an atomic variable. This is what we call a vector. And to actually make a vector, it's not enough just to have three, four, uh, five, seven, nine, and then you have a vector with four elements, which is these numbers. You will need uh, to put this little C um, in front of it. So that uh, kind of, uh, that's also a function that, that turns this into a, into a vector. Um, which is like a list, but just to, uh, it's a bit like what you would think of as a list, but but where we will define each, uh, the position and so on of each um, uh, number. Then we have uh, data frames and they can be looked more at, as like a matrix. And here we have actually just made it from a, a matrix function um, where we have uh, decided that there should be two rows. Um, and uh, as we see in here in the code, um, we can look at it and certainly, yes, there are two rows and then there are three um, columns which are called uh, x1, x2, x3. That's not something I have called them. The R just gives them the name. Um, yes. All right. Um, oops. So there are also uh, different uh, uh, data types, as I said, and it can uh, uh, and, and and it can be structured many ways. It can also be structured at dates and so on. But but in general, there's these three main data types: numeric characters and factors. Where numeric that's uh, numbers, it can be uh, integers, but it can also be doubles and so on. Um, uh, characters is like uh, text strings, like this is a character. Um, uh, but uh, then there is a last uh, 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 version, which is factor, which is, can be both the uh, numbers and numeric, or it, it can be represented by numbers or text or so on. But it's usually something, um, uh, for example, when you're uh, for say you work with a survey and you have a uh, tree, you have a uh, kind of tree uh, things that you can have in a drop down menu. You can, uh, uh, are you between 20 and 30, or between 30 and 40, or between 40 and 50, or between 50 and 60, and so on. Uh, so there are these categories, and you can say, and then, then um, these would be stored, uh, or it would be reasonable to store these as factors. 
Um, so, uh, uh, but but you can choose, and you can also turn them back and forth from uh, factors to characters and so on. Uh, you cannot always turn them into numeric because then uh, then you will get an error. But um, um, in your in your data frame, but but um, you can try, and we'll of course try that. Oh. All right. So uh, just a minute to the first question session. So um, you're going to, um, we're going now to uh, to calculate uh, things, and of course you can do that. And I'll just error checking here. So um, um, we can do a lot of things. You can change format of variable, as uh, I just said. We can also add um, uh, minus. Uh, we can multiply and so on uh, using. Uh, uh, common um, uh, symbols for that, uh, and we can uh, take square root. We can take logarithm and po uh, potential uh, calculations and so on. We can lift numbers. Um, so, uh, so there are a lot of uh, different uh, things you can uh, do. Uh, I'll just show them here. Some of the things. So now we have uh, we have our uh, data frame, our vector, and our uh, atomic uh, variable here. Um, so up here we have uh, we have our vector, which is now numeric. We can even see it here, but we can make it into a character now. And then our numbers are now not uh, numeric anymore, but they will be treated like text and so on. Um, and for example, if um, um, we have this uh, data frame. Uh, we can see here. Um, we can make um, everything of the data frame numeric, and then let's see what happens. That's not true. I haven't made everything in the data frame numeric. I have actually only uh, made uh, column two numeric here. Um, and let's uh, look at this. Uh, What happened? So, as you can see here, uh, we look at the data frame. I have written this function structure, and I'll show you a bit more on that uh, later on in the lecture. But here you can see that uh, the first column is uh, now a character, the second column is numeric, and the third column is a character. And that makes sense, you know. The last one here really makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing I like to also uh, show you before uh, your own exercises, then how now we have put things into variables, right? Now we want to get data out again, and that's actually uh, not that hard. Um, you just simply uh, write it here, like uh, x, we just run it, and here we can see, so x is tree. We can also print x again, we get a tree. Um, we can also take the first element in our uh, vector here tree, and you can see now there is um, I don't know what these are called hyphens mm -hmm. around a tree here, uh, which means that they, these are not this is now a text, and no no longer a numeric. Um, yeah. Uh, then there are you can look at for example uh, here. You have taken a, a second row, sorry, um, yeah, second row, first column. Yeah, that was correct. Second row, first column. And that's simply because um, that's how data frames are structured. And I'll say, uh, say a bit more on data frames in the end of the lecture. So, uh, so just uh, um, accept that there are these these uh, three ways uh, to to get the information out of a data frame, um, which are, and these ways are actually the same, right? So this one looks very much like the first one, except for one is uh, changed with the which the with the um, the name from the label here. All right, so. Um, Oh, that was a, maybe I should uh, just uh, show the calculations. For example, here we can make a new variable uh, y where we say x times 2, and we know x is 3, right? So we 
do that, and now we have y, which is 6. Um, we can also take our vector and say vector times uh, 2. Now we have the problem that it's uh, uh, as a character, so it won't work. And that's a quite important thing, like what we talked about before, like you have to have the right data type uh, to be able to do uh, the things uh, that you need. So if we did like this as numeric, we have no longer any errors. And we can see that this, ve this vector will be um, made of four uh, numbers, which are uh, two times uh, the one before, right? So you can do all these things, you can take uh, you can also take a rows in a data frame and do stuff with. You can take columns in a data frame and do stuff with. So you have a lot of uh, opportunities here now. And uh, all this, all this data is stored in the in the uh, in the memory. So you can do so. So many of these row and and uh, um, column uh, operations are really fast um, to do. All right. So. We are now at our question session. So, uh, so if you have any questions before we go to a small exercise that I'd uh, like you to do, or we can do it together, of course. But uh, um, I think it's good if you have your computer with you that you try try it out a bit, because or else you've just forgotten it after this session. Hi, Sina. We have questions. Hey. Yes. The one is: What's the difference between your data frame and your metrics? Um, well, uh, so a data frame has a bit more, I think it has a bit more functionalities and you don't, don't know if you store, I have, I, actually I'm, I'm not, I don't know all the deta details on that, but usually when you work with data uh, in R, you'd store it always as a data frame, but you can put it into a matrix format, which is like a very simple uh, vector format, right? So. Um, so uh, I actually cannot give a very uh, good uh, answer on that. Maybe someone else knows uh, more on that. <laughs> Isn't it like that, that uh, data frame format is uh, mostly like a column, uh, you know, like the column based data set. So yeah. it's like uh, having like uh, columns and st such and uh, mm -hmm. matrices are more like a bunch of data just yeah. to... Yeah, yeah that's not not not, not necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily uh, relational like this, but the whole yeah. thing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and you can make row names like and column names and stuff like that in in mm -hmm. the data frames. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, that was a good question, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, Stephen says that data frame is a list of equal length vectors. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, our language has several packages for solving a particular problem. So how to make a decision on which one is the best to use? Yeah, I think there are many uh, there are many things in it. And actually, I, there, it can, there are both what, what the programming language are you good at? <laughs> so it's also what do you, uh, wait, which uh, programming languages do you prefer to work in? And do you have a good... Um, uh, intuition about and so on so that's uh, that's that's one way to decide but there is also you can also try to see if you are going to work with it in industry for example so what are the uh, in in that industry are they using more r or are they using more uh, python or, or other things i mean usually r would be better would be a better choice than many of the commercial uh, uh commercial, commercial tools but but um uh, because also because it can take all form input uh, data formats as I showed in the video, right? Um, so um, uh, and that so can that also be a yes, good practice. Decision. Sorry, yeah. So, yeah, so that, uh, that, that are that has of course nothing to do with this. But but what I what is good about R particularly is this uh, that I mentioned before that it's very good at visualizations and it's very good at. Um, when you have like these huge tables, you can do a lot of operations on the on the row on the columns and the rows and so on. Whereas in many other languages, you don't store uh, data that way, so it 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 will be a, a bit uh, slower. Then then on the other hand, there can be other things that are slower in 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 R. There are some of the uh, deep learning 
algorithms that are maybe more optimized for, for Python, for example. Yeah. Maybe other people have suggestions as well. <laughs> Um, I would say also that that actually it is a good practice as well, like Stephen also mentions it, that uh, for example, it often happens that some packages from R is used in uh, Python uh, code because uh, R packages are used for something else. Or for example, especially for very long, the graphics, uh, the graphical uh, visualizations and whatever were looking much better in R. Then, yeah. then in Python you could do like a three D stuff and whatever. Uh, that was, for example, one of the reasons why why um, we would use R for visualization rather than Python packages. Packages, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Going back yeah. for one moment to this data frame versus matrices, uh, I I am not sure if that is right. Actually, that uh, that uh, data frame is uh, equal length vectors because if you think about it, I think uh, matrices are more uh, ruled into one specific schema. The data frame can have uh, empty columns as well. But yeah, and I'm also just thinking of data frames as something where you can name the the uh, name the columns and name the uh, the um, rows and so on, so you can, uh, so we have more options there. Yeah, but but I have to look into this till next time. Yeah, <laughs> because that's a, yeah, there there might be a lot of uh, small uh, details that that are uh, for sure. Differs. Yeah. All right, I give it back to you. Thank you. So. Um, uh, so now uh, we should have a small exercise where you in uh, our studio should try to create uh, a single variable um, and a vector and a data frame. And also maybe try to change data type of variables just as, as uh, I have done and do some calculations. So, so just uh, uh, if you could just try uh, this and uh, keep you uh, just open R while we are, I, I keep on. Uh, Labouring, um, so uh, so here uh, try to uh, to um, for example uh, uh, put in some data um, to uh, to a vari to atomic variable or vector or a data frame, um, and and uh, and try to uh, to do some of these calculations um, uh, on the variables. So, and this is of course much easier when you have some kind of interaction with people. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so I'll I'll not uh, stay too long here. Um, but um, but it's just really nice to have tried these things out uh, for yourself. And please let me know if you have any questions to some of these practical things. Now I have stuffed this with a bit more code that you need than you need to to actually do the exercise right. Um, Sometimes you also can see here if you start to write a uh, to write a code, then you can get it, and then you can just uh, press on it, and, and then you are sure that it's spelled correctly because that's a thing in programming, right? That it's so easy to spell things wrong. Um, one thing I should also say is that you can uh, uh, use this help function over here, and I'm just talking while you're trying things out. For example, you can uh, look at as numeric um, and look. So, how does this work? It's a bit boring, right? You have just a uh, you have a just have x as uh, some an input, and then you can even take uh, how much you 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 can use the length uh, to define how much of it should be numeric. So here you can see, for example, um, some examples, and that's uh, and and uh, and the built-in something I would also like to say about the building help function here um, is uh, somehow okay. You know, you can see the usage up here, and you can uh, look at the argument here. And you can get an example here, but I don't always think the examples are actually really good. So one thing I would do 
um, is actually to look for at Google for this one, and <clears throat> and then I'll uh, uh, find um, uh, maybe an answer uh, at Stack Overflow if I want something more advanced. Um, so so uh, that's that's really a good place uh, to go to try to Google your question and. Um, sometimes you find the answer in some R material, and sometimes you find it on on um, uh, on Stack Overflow or other places where where other people have uh, asked the exact same question as you. Uh, <laughs> and it's uh, amazing how some weird little niche question that you think nobody else are interested in this thing, you just uh, write uh, this, for example, R numeric length. Ah, and then you figure out that there are a lot of people who have uh, done that. <clears throat> so, I hope you have played around a bit now. I'll uh, go on with the um, functions. Um, so, uh, function is like uh, this uh, mixer function, for example, the do mixer function we talked about before. Uh, if you, if you should uh, take it into something real, uh, but but uh, here it's uh, it's an operation that does something to your data normally, and you can build your own function. And I'll show you today, uh, or you can borrow one from the internet. For example, if you are, have this little niche question that you want to pose quite often, there are some some uh, nice people who said, "Oh, I have solved this by writing this function." Um, and then you can uh, reuse it uh, on your own data. Um, and you can see the code, so you can also uh, see how, how the function actually works. But I'll, we are not going to look at that today because um, I thought that would be too much. So we have um, uh, some examples of functions. So uh, else numeric is a function. Uh, the C is a function. Uh, read Excel is a function. That's if you're going to read an Excel file, which we'll do in a minute. Um, uh, so, so there are uh, different ways here. Um, also, for example, t-test. A t-test is uh, a function. I'll try here to show some of the arguments. And this one is from the help function. So if I can just show you. Um, first, here we have this. Um, uh, written this way, and it's uh, except if you are really good in R, it can be a bit, um, uh, it can be a bit uh, um, uh, impractical to look at this. And then actually, it can be maybe even better to to then Google t-test example two-sided or something, <laughs> and then you can. Uh, uh, or or, or uh, alternative equal this or something right and then you can uh, then you maybe can get some better um, uh, some better versions of of uh, um, of this um, it's, and uh, of course there is still an example in the, there are example in the buttons but but button but that can sometimes be um, a bit hard to interpret. What's going on here? All right. So, if if you, do you have more questions by now? If not, I think uh, it was very short session. I agree. Uh, then we'll go on. Uh, there, I have uh, made a small exercise here too, where I try to look at um, uh, there is a function. Uh, uh, this uh, t-test function, and you can, for example, uh, write these three lines of code. Very simple. Um, so you are taking, uh, you're creating some uh, normal distributed, ten points of normal distributed uh, data, and put it into X with a, uh, I think it's with a mean zero and um, and the standard deviation one. And then after this, you do a t-test on, on these two variables to see if, uh, if they are equal or not. And you can, uh, uh, just a moment, you can just look at our R num to look at what it is. 
And yes, I was right. It's uh, you're creating some uh, numbers with the mean zero and standard deviation one, uh, some random numbers, and you have two different. Um, here you have. Uh, so now we have uh, both uh, x and y are uh, vectors, numeric vectors, as we can see up here. Ten points, and you can see here they are. Uh, uh, around um, uh, zero. We can create a t-test to see what's uh, here. Uh, so uh, the t-test things can, really cannot um, um, exclude the, the, the possibility that these two are equal. That's what it means. So, so if the p-value is below 0 0.05, usually you say then, then uh, these two um these two vectors are not the same but well they seem to be very close to each other and you can also see that they should be right <laughs> because they are uh i mean maybe if you're doing an uh, enough uh, random uh uh examples of this you'll actually um uh you'll maybe find uh, and now and then that they are uh, differing. Yeah. So the exercise here is try to add uh, five to the X value and then try to do a, a one-sided T-test. Um, so that's uh, the exercise that you should do. And I think we'll try to do it uh, together now because since we don't have this uh, interaction thing where we can uh, uh, chat about it. It's maybe better um, that I um, uh, that we go through it together, right? So you can. Um, so I made a new code here where we are. Not to confuse you too much, I have a do like this. So now we put add five to all the values in uh, in X, uh, and we make an a Y um, here, which is. Uh, just uh, with a uh, mean of uh, five. And then uh, maybe we should start with making the common t-test here. So what can we see here? So now they are diff definitely uh, different. Um, so, uh, and then if we are going for the, for the greater, we can see this is also different, but it's a bit the p value is even smaller than than the p value of the two sided t test so so you can say see that the uh, that that uh, one sided uh, t test with alternative greater is better and i've just uh, i have i always uh, uh, forget these things so, so what does it mean so i have written it in my slide <laughs> and and the other one here when you look at this the output here you can see the p-value is equal one, but you can also see here uh, you can uh, the mean uh, is uh, uh, four and a half of x, and it's uh, a bit more than uh, zero for y. So so it should be um, different, right? And the standard deviation which you cannot see here is is uh, equal one. <clears throat> All right. So um, and I'll just find it here. So um, if you say less, then, uh, then the hypoth hypothesis is that y is smaller than y, um, uh, y is smaller than x, uh, and greater means uh, the other way around. And the thing is, so you could say, but it is, y is smaller than than x and that's true and that's why the p-value becomes so large so usually we try to formulate it such that we have a hypothesis we can um, reject um, such that h0 is a hypothesis that we reject yeah all right so but that's the stat and i'll not go too much into it i know you have already uh, there have already been some sessions here in AI 42. So, so if you get, want to get more into it, you can uh, rewatch these uh, sessions. All right. Um, so uh, do you have any questions now? I have maybe been playing around with the exercise. Please let me know.
All right. So um, I'll go. Uh, even Hogan, is there are there more uh, uh, questions? All right. So I'll just go on here. Uh, a bit more data frames. Uh, we'll rewatch uh, these. So uh, here is an example where we uh, take this matrix and put it into a data frame. Um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, we need, if we read, want to read in files, we need a library. Um, and we also have different tools to uh, inspect these data frames. Um, so I'll just go through uh, what, what I have here. Uh, and then, then uh, we go into uh, to, to the last uh, coding here, um, where we're looking back in, in our R studio. Um, so uh, in, typically a data frame is, uh, uh, is uh, structured such that we have uh, rows on the first. Um, so the, the, the row number here is the first uh, part of uh, uh, of the space within the squared brackets, and then we have the column number afterwards here, like this. So we can also access uh, access uh, data in another way, for example, uh, using this um, uh, uh, dollar sign. Uh, so here we actually have a vector, which is uh, uh, the column. Um, for example, here we have a vector with column one. Um, and then we can even, if we want to access a row within this, we can uh, do it like that. Um, we, can, we can put a square bracket afterwards. Um, so, so that's the two way you can actually, you can, there are probably others because sometimes, you know, many people, they, they, uh, they have made new functions in R. Uh, so, uh, but, but these are the two, uh, that are mainly used. Um, so, so as I said uh, before, there are here are three different ways of actually accessing the same, which is column one. Right. So let's go back and look a bit more into uh, our old friend, the, the data frames. Uh, so now we need something called a library. Um, and that's, uh, that's actually a package um, uh, we use library to access uh, the package. So library is a function that opens up a package. And sometimes if you don't have the package already, so I have, uh, then you can go in here and press an install and then you can uh, uh, install it, right? Uh, hmm. <laughs> oh no, I'll just, uh, yeah, it was fast. That was good. Uh, <laughs> I didn't try that before. So uh, sometimes it can take a while to install uh, packages, right? So uh, after we, we have uh, installed it, it will be here in our package and it's installed on the computer now. So uh, the reason for not taking in all the packages in the world is that, that they will take up quite a lot of space. So you so install the packages when you need them, just like you only load in the packages you need I have a bit, uh, you, you know, you can also load a lot of uh, packages in, you know, if you sometimes use this package and sometimes use the others, you can just put them all in in the beginning. But but uh, it's a good habit to to uh, to only use the libraries you need um, because uh, it will take a lot of, of space to actually load them in. So, but let's see if we can now access it. Oh yes, but now it it warns me. Sorry, isn't it Danish? And it warns me that this uh, package is maybe <laughs> a bit too new for my R version. So that's so we are very very curious if uh, if that this will uh, go on, right? So, but we try to put in. Um, uh, we have our data frame, and we can uh, and we can, for example. Uh, so what I have done here, we are looking into it. Um, I have not, if you if something is a, a factor, then uh, then you will need to put it into a character first and then uh, as numeric. I think there are some new packages that does it smarter, but this is just uh, something you can always do with the base R installation, which is like the common libraries that are always in in R whenever you have uh, whether you have uh, downloaded other things or not. There are uh, there is a library of base uh, functions. So uh, now 
Well, I have only run this one because I think it's fun. Then we can look at the different uh, um, types here. So we can look at uh, when we this function view data frame, then we can see it here and we can see it looks like these two have different uh, uh, are different data types somehow, right? But we cannot, we don't know. And we can see over here. Uh, hello world, that's definitely, that looks like text at least. Then we can use this one that gives us a bit more information. Here we have the structure of the data frame. Here we can see that X1 is numeric, X2 is a character and X3 is a character. So X3 is a character, that's just great. Um, but but that X, uh, X2 is a character, that's a bit stupid. So we don't even need to press it into a character because it's already a character. Then we can do like this. I just uh, ran the code and then I'm running this structure code again. And now we can see it, it makes sense now. So there is a numeric and then there is a character uh, here in row three. Then there is a, a I, I mean, there are more ways to inspect um, data, but you can also, um, for example, look at the summary. Yeah, and we can see uh, uh, that that uh, the first uh, column here uh, with two values, uh, it takes an average so that you can get the mean and you get the median and the max and the minimum. That can be really nice to have this overview if you have a, a data frame, for example, of a survey with Likert scale questions, you can, um, that can be nice and a lot of other uh, good, um, um, reasons for, for, for making this uh, summary. Then we have some new friends here. Um, and um, so I just have to see where am I? Oh, I'm the right place, that was good. <laughs> so uh, now I can just do like this and I read in my files. But this is what already always goes wrong because we need to be in the right directory working directory to do that. Uh, so so one thing that will always work if we put here, the, it is to import data set. And uh, the first data set here we need is a CSV file. So, and that's uh, equal to a text file. And it's this one, as far as I remember. And here we can see down here, this is, the input file, this is what it looks like in a data frame, right? Where we have uh, um, names of the columns and so on. Um, we can also, we can see here that it understands that the separator is a comma, but we can change it if we think, but it's wrong. The separator is really white space. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can see now it looks weird. Uh, so we go back to comma. Um, and there are a lot of other things you can set here. Row names, you can also make a use first uh, column as row name. No, oh, it won't allow us to do that. Maybe use numbers. Hmm, it hasn't. But, um, but we'll try this and see what happens. Uh, also, we say if there are some strings that are uh, empty, uh, it will put in NAs uh, instead. And we can press this on string as factors. Then uh, all the strings uh, we put in are factors, but we we'll, can also just have them in as characters. Uh, that will, uh, now the, the strings will be loaded as uh, characters, for example, region and country codes and so on, and disease. So this is uh, from data from WHO. There is no corona data, COVID-19 data in it. It's only measles and other stuff of uh, other kind of diseases, right? So we now import it. Interesting, yeah. So, and, and uh, what have been done here is we have used this code and then just for the next time we're going to use it, we put in this long uh, path for, for, for it, um, right. Um, so, uh, and 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 uh, instead of that, we can of course just uh, 
uh, have a workspace here uh, where we put in the data. So um, if you're interested, I can show you a bit on how how easy to how how easy to it's easy to to make a new uh, uh, project folder where you can just so that you don't have to write all these things, but you're uh, adding like this. I'm just curious if I actually did anything with this row names. Since it's numbering, it's uh, <laughs> difficult. I'm trying to say that I would try to do a bit of stuff. No, we cannot. Um, we're not allowed to do that. It could. <clears throat> uh, but these things are things you can try out again uh, yourself too, right? I have another uh, table here, which is an Excel file, which is also easy to uh, read in. And as you can see here, you can also read in files of other uh, formats from SPSS, for example. I think SPSS, interesting thing is that SPSS files are not called SPS, .SPSS, they are called .SAV, uh, but that doesn't matter. Uh, R takes it all, also Stata files, also SAS files, which is really a nice thing because uh, SPSS won't take um, uh, R output formats or it won't take Stata output format, right? So these are commercial uh, and, and uh, R developers thought, well, it's really nice to be able to actually read in these files. Um, so, uh, so they made uh, packages for that. Um, but we are going to uh, take an Excel file here, bags of uh, oranges. Yes, and here we can see it is a bit different, right? But here we can see that the uh, that uh, uh, back number, weight, and price they are all uh, called double, which is a number format, um, and origin and food label is character, right? So we can uh, also change it to other things, but uh, but we'll uh, keep it like this. It looks good. The default sheet, uh, but you can also. Take another Excel sheet if you are you rather want that, but uh, but we keep on, on this. We can also say uh, if if uh, for example if you ha have uh, some data in from some pivot or something, you might uh, skip some some uh, row numbers, maybe the two first. Then you can see, look see here. Then you, then um, then we have simply simply uh, skip the first two rows, but that's not what we want. You can just okay, just. All right, so here we have the code, and what I will do is actually not read it in. Uh, I'll just take the code here, um, because uh, I'd rather have a shorter uh, name for this file. Um, and you can see here that it's, uh, um, it's the same code as the one I wrote before. Um, and let's, uh, so the first thing is we look at how many we we are looking. We are going back to the WHO file. We look at how many rows are there. There are quite a lot, forty-three thousand. We are want to look at it. We use a view function. Uh, so here it opens up here, and it's a um, somehow um, um, uh, alpha, uh, Excel ish filtering a thing where you can actually sort. You can also sort, for example, here by year. Here's the new, younger, uh, new, oldest, sorry, <laughs> data, and here is uh, the newest uh, data, and so on. So, so you can uh, you can use this um, a bit interactively. Um, then there is um, a structure which we looked at before, and it's just like when we read it in. Um, so we have uh, uh, here. These are all characters, uh, which is nice. Uh, then we have uh, year is uh, integers, and and uh, finally we have uh, um, uh, these number of cases, which is numeric. We'll try to do a summary here too. But then we have um, um, uh, it's not very informative on the on the uh, character. Um, once, but it's it's uh, informative here on the. Uh, you can see, for example, also maybe not for a year, but but then you can see here that that in general, uh, it seems to be a very uh, um, 
uh, bias. So there are a lot of zeros in it that are uh, included, right? So the zeros you could uh, uh, exchange with the NA if you wanted to look at uh, uh, more look at these these diseases in 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 the countries that that actually has counted any, right? So. So that's something you could uh, consider to, to put these into an A, in a uh, value. But I'll not uh, do that now because we're already over time. All right. So um, uh, just a little bit more how we can expect these data frames. We can, for example, uh, uh, take, uh, we can look at, so now I'm just, see, so what I'm doing now is I'm just putting the cursor over this code that I want to run. Then I press Control Enter, and then I the only thing I get here is this function that I just put my cursor over, right? So we can see here we have uh, these are the unique diseases. So uh, we have uh, forty three thousand rows, but but it's only with these uh, seven diseases. If we are not sure how many various, we can use the length function, and then we can see how how long is this. Um, Yes, and also, for example, then you can um, see how many rows are there again. Uh, so that's um, uh, that dis that didn't um, <laughs> give gave us any new information here. Uh, so, but we can look at, um, for example, uh, the maximum of uh, of cases. Well, this that's uh, this uh, value, which is oof, many one million cases, um, and we can see over here uh, from our summary that uh, that this this uh, is equal to to that one. So, so if you just want the max value of something, then you just use the max function. And there are many other functions here, and that's a problem sometimes about introducing. There are so many functions you want to show, uh, but this is a few. And uh, then I'll go on with a not so introductory um, introduction uh, to R next time in some weeks. Um, but please uh, uh, give some inputs to, to the session, then I'll uh, uh, refine it for next time. Yes? Hi, welcome back, Sina. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had uh, some questions during the session. I think yes. some uh, people also followed you with coding. Mm -hmm. um, so those who have followed you, could you guys uh, shoot us a message so we can see how many of you have uh, brought, how many of you have written code with us um, for the next yeah. time. Uh, is coming back with some more hardcore introductory to R, um, and uh, we are going to share more links before that where you can uh, prepare for that session because there you will also have the chance to write code again. Uh, also, Stina, are you able to share the code that you wrote today? So yes, those who couldn't I, yeah. keep up, then they can also try it out. Yeah, definitely. I'll clean it up before I send it right, because now I have <laughs> just added in a lot of stuff into it, so uh, so, uh, so that it follows kind of the slides. So I can send out both slides and, and a code structure. So, yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I, I understood what you mean. So it's yeah, all right. yeah, code, it's a code structure. <laughs> there is not really any structure in my code. <laughs> so that's the thing in R also that you uh, since it's just one line commands, it can also sometimes be, uh, you need to do uh, do some things to structure it, right? <laughs> Having yes, comments and, and so on into it. And yeah. I remember that was always uh, interesting when I started to look into R, that, uh, <laughs> that, that it was really funny that for the first time I didn't know uh, that kind of notebook environment. And when I ran the notebook, it ran everything from the yeah. beginning. <laughs> And <laughs> so that is a 
pretty big problem when you do like advanced analytics with like a 100 lines of code and, and then it starts again from the beginning because you forget to choose only that line that you yeah. want to run and it starts from the total beginning and you're like, oh, come on, Eva. <laughs> you have to have a cup of coffee. Or <laughs> yeah, and you go out for a coffee, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we got an answer that uh, someone actually managed to follow along with you, which is pretty good. That's, yeah. that's nice. Uh, so we hope that uh, next time the people can follow you again. Uh, we will make sure that we are here with Token to, to support um, so that uh, attendees who have any problems, uh, they can ask us and we try to answer also when you when you are deep in your code. Um, so what, how, when do we meet again, Token? Yeah, so next uh, session is on May 5. So then we'll meet with Sina again with follow up to this session. So with yes, that, nice. I think we can thank we thank Zina uh, and we thank all of you who has been watching this stream live yeah. and also for those of you watching um, yeah. online. Yeah, and so it would be so, so nice also. Actually, also I would like to have some input on the level if uh, if I'm going too slow into this or so on. Or I too think you fast. did great. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but but uh, I'm interested from from people who are <laughs> listening sure. listening also if. Uh, uh, what they thought about it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so all the people who attended us today, please uh, remember to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and follow our meetup page as well. And uh, there, uh, that would be great if you could write a comment. What did you think about today's session? So Sina could uh, bring in some more exciting stuff for you. Um, and we meet on the 5th of May, about which you will also hear at our meetup page. So yes. with that, I want to say a great thank you for our attendees for joining us and for Sina for the awesome session and Hoken for all your help during the stream. <laughs> and I have to say thanks for the great initiative you're taking. I think it's awesome. And uh, thanks thank for you. all the coordination because, you know, we are just jumping in and telling what we know, but I know you are doing a lot of stuff in uh, coordinating us. <laughs> Just we are there. trying to do the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. So thank yeah. you a lot. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And have fun. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.